योग वशिष्ठा बाय सेज वाल्मीकि बुक थ्री उत्पत्ति खंडा इज बीइंग कंटिन्यूड रिफ्लेक्शंस ऑन ह्यूमन लाइफ एंड माइंड वशिष्ठा रिलेटेड द नॉक्टर्नल फील्ड्स वर दस इन्फेस्टिंग द ग्लूमी फील्ड एंड डेथ यमा रोमिंग अबाउट इट एज ए मराउड्रस इन द डे टाइम द नेकेड एंड फ्लीटिंग होस्ट्स were reveling on their provision of carrion in their nightly abode and under the canopy of thick darkness which was likely to be laid hold upon under the clutches of one's hand it was in the still hour of the gloomy night when the host of heaven seemed to be fast bound in sleep that a sadness stole in upon the mind of leela's magnanimous husband he thought about what was to be done on the next morning in council with his counselors and then went to his bed which was as white as moonlight and as cold as frost his lotus eyes were closed in sleep for a while in his royal camp which was as white as the moonbeams and covered by the cold dews of night then the two ladies issued forth from their vacuous abode and entered the tent through a crevice as the air penetrates into the heart and emits an unblown bud of flower rama asked how is it possible sir that the gross bodies of the goddesses with their limited dimensions could enter the tent through one of its holes as small as the pore of a piece of cloth vasishta answered who so mistakes himself to be composed of a material body it is no way possible for him to enter a small hole with that gross body of his but he who thinks himself to be pent up in his corporeal body as in a cage and obstructed by it in its in his flight and does not believe himself to be himself to fill his frame or to be measured by its length but has the true notion of his inward subtle spirit it is no way impossible for him to have his page his passage anywhere he pleases to go he who perceives his original spiritual state as forming the better half of his body may pass as a spirit through a chink but who so relies in his subsequent half of the material body cannot go beyond it in the form of his intellect as the air never rises upwards nor the flame of fire ever goes downward so it is the nature of the spirit to rise upward as that of the body to go down but the intellect is made to turn in the way in which it is trained as the man sitting in the shade has no notion of the feeling of heat or warmth so one man has no idea of the knowledge or thoughts of another person as is one's knowledge so is his thought and such is the mode of his life it is only by means of ardent practice that the mind is turned to the right course as one's belief of a snake in a rope is removed by the conviction of his error so are the bent of the mind and course of conduct in life changed from wrong to right by the knowledge of truth it is one's knowledge that gives rise to his thoughts and the thoughts that direct his pursuits in life this is a truth known even to the young and to every man of sense now then the soul that resembles a being seen in a dream or formed in fantasy and which is of the nature of air and vacuum is never liable to be obstructed anywhere in its course there is an intellectual body which all living beings possess in every place it is known both by consciousness as well as the feelings of our hearts it is by the divine will that the intellect rises and the intellect rises and sets by turns at first it was produced in its natural simple and intellectual form and then being invested with a material body it makes together a an unity of the person out of the duality now you must know the triple vacuity composed of the three airy spaces the spirit mind 
and space to be one and the same all the three being equally all pervasive but not so their receptacle of the material body which has no pervasion know this intellectual body of beings to be like the air present with everything and everywhere just as you desire of knowing extends over all things in all places and presents them all to your knowledge it abides in the smallest particles and reaches to the spheres of heavens it reposes in the cells of flowers and delights in the leaves of trees it delights in hills and dales and dances over the waves of the oceans it rides over the clouds and falls down in the showers of rain and hailstones of heaven it moves at pleasure in the vast firmament and penetrates to the solid mountains its body bears no break in it and is as minute as an atom yet it becomes as big as a mountain lifting its head to heaven and as large as the earth which is the fixed and firm support of all things it views the inside and outside of everything and bears the forests like hairs on its bodies it extends in the form of the sky and contains millions of words in itself it identifies itself with the ocean and transforms its whirlpools to spots upon its person it is of the nature of an uninterrupted understanding ever calm and serene in its aspect it is possessed of its intellectual form from before the creation of the visible world and being all comprehensive as vacuity itself it is conversant with the natures of all beings it is an unreality as the appearance of water in the mirage but manifests itself as a reality to the understanding by its intelligence without this the intellectual man is a nil as the son of a barren woman and a blank as the figure of a body seen in a dream rama asked how is that mind to which you attribute so much powers and what is that again which you say to be nothing why is it no reality and as something distinct from all what we see vashishta replied all individual minds are endued with their faculties except all such individualities whose minds are engrossed with the error all the worlds are either of a longer or shorter duration and they appear and disappear at times some of these vanish in a moment and others endure to the end of a kalpa but it is not so with the mind whose progress i will now relate to you there is an insensibility which overtakes every man before his death this is the darkness of his dissolution after the shocks of delirium and death are over the spiritual part of every body is regenerated anew in a different form as if it was aroused from a state of trance or swoon and as the spirit of god assumes his triune t r i u n e form with the persons of brahma and virat after the dissolution of the world of world for its recreation so every person receives the triplicate form of his spiritual intellectual and corporeal beings after the termination of his life and death rama said as we believe ourselves to be reproduced after death by reason of our reminiscence so must we understand the recreation of all bodies in the world by the same cause hence there is nothing uncaused in it vashishta replied the gods hari hara and others having obtained their disembodied liberation or videha mukti that is the final extinction of their bodies their minds and spirits as in nirvana at the universal dissolution could not retain their reminiscence to cause their regeneration but human beings having both their spiritual and intellectual bodies enter entire at their death do not lose their remembrance of the past nor can they have their final liberation with the brahma unless they obtain their disembodied state which is possible to all in this life or hereafter by the edification of their souls through yoga meditation alone the birth and 
death of all other beings like yourself are caused by their reminiscence and for want of their disembodied liberation or eternal salvation the living soul retains its consciousness within itself after its pangs of death are over but remains in its state of insensibility by virtue of its own nature called prarabdha the universal vacuum is called nature prakriti it is the reflection of the invisible divine mind and is the parent of all that is dull or moving jada jada which are so produced by cause of their reminiscence or its absence the former causing the regeneration of living beings and the later its cessation as in inert matter as the living principle or animal life begins to have its understanding bodha it is called mahat or an intelligent being which is possessed of its consciousness ahankara it has then the organs of perception and conception added to it from their elements tan matras residing in the vacuous ether this minutely intelligent substance is next joined with the five internal senses which form its body and which is otherwise called its spiritual body this spiritual being by its long association with the external senses comes to believe itself as a sensible being and then by imagining to have the sensible form it finds itself invested with a material body as beautiful as that of a lotus then seated in the embryo it reposes in a certain position for some time and inflated itself like the air until it is fully expanded it then thinks itself to be fully developed in the womb as a man dreams of a fairy form in his sleep and believes this illusion as a reality he then views the other world where he is born to die just as one visits a land where he is destined to meet his death and there remains to relish its enjoyments as prepared for him but the spiritual man soon perceives everything as pure vacuum and that his own body and this world are but illusions and vain vacuities he perceives the gods and human habitations the hills and the heavens resplendent with the sun and stars to be no more than abodes of disease and debility decay and ultimate death and destruction he sees nothing but a sad change in the natures of things and the all that is movable and immovable great or small together with the seas hills and rivers and peoples of this earth and the days and nights are all subject to decay sooner or later the knowledge that i am born here of this earth and that this is my mother these my treasures and such are my hopes and expectations is as false as empty air that these are my merits and these are my demerits and these the desires that i had at heart that i was a boy and now young are the airy thoughts of the hollow mind this world resembles a forest where every being is like a detached arbor the sable clouds are its leaves and the stars its full blown flowers the walking men are as its restless deer and the aerial gods and demons its birds of the air the the broad daylight is the flying dust of its flowers and the dark night the deep covert of its groove the seas are like its rills and fountains and the eight boundary mountains as its artificial hills the mind is the great tank in it containing the weeds and shrubs of human thoughts in abundance wherever a man dies he is instantly changed to this state and views the same things everywhere and every one thus rises and falls incessantly like the leaves of trees in its in this forest of the world millions of brahmas rudras indras maruts vishnus and sons together with unnumbered mountains and seas continents and islands have appeared and disappeared in the eternal course of the body thus no one can count the number of beings that have passed away are passing and shall have to pass hereafter nor such as are in existence and have to become 
extinct in the unfathomable eternity of Brahma. Hence, it is impossible to comprehend the stupendous fabric of the universe anyhow except in the mind which is as spacious as the infinite space itself and as variable as the course of events in the world. The mind is the vacuous sphere of the intellect and the infinite share of the intellect is the seat of the supreme. Now know the whirlpool and waves of the sea to be of the same element as the sea in which they rise and fall though they are not of the same durable nature as the sea water by reason of their evanescence. So the phenomena are the same with the noumena though none of these is a reality. The ethereal spirit, the ethereal sphere of heaven is but a reflection of the intellectual sphere of the divine mind and the bright orbs of the firmament are gems in the bosom of Brahma. Its concavity is the cave of the mind of the eternal one. The world according to the sense in which I take it as the seat of God is highly interesting but not so in your sense of its being a sober reality. So the meaning of the word I and thou refer according to me to the intellectual spirit and according to you to the living soul and body. Hence Leela and Saraswati being in their vacuous intellectual bodies were led by the pure desire of their souls to every place without any obstruction or interruption. The intellectual spirit has the power to present itself wherever it takes on earth or in the sky and before objects known or unknown and wished to be known by it. It was by this power that, the, that they could enter into the tent of the prince. The intellect has its way to all places and things over which it exercises its powers of observation, reflection and reasoning to their full extent. This is known as the spiritual and unconfined body, Ativahika, whose course cannot be obstructed by any restriction, whatever. To be continued, Om Namah Shivaya.